we have been discussing Faraday's law. And it says that E m f produced in a circuit is equal to minus d phi by d t, which is minus d by d t of b at a point r, b may depend on t dot d s. And what it meant is that if I take a wire and through it there is some magnetic field and if I change the shape of the wire or change the magnetic field there is going to be a current in this. In the previous lecture we saw through an example where we moved a rod out that there was something called the motional EMF which actually comes from change of area. However, the demonstrations I showed you were those where no change of area took place. The only thing that was changing was B. So, it is also change in B that could give rise to an EMF. So, let us see that. So, EMF could have two terms minus if B is changing with time T by d t. I am putting a partial derivative here because at a given r only t is changing dot d s plus I could have b fix no dependence on t dot d s and this could be changing with time. We have seen its effect and now we want to focus on this. We want to focus on this because this gives you a relationship between a field which is generated due to change in magnetic field. A field which is generated is the electric field due to change in magnetic field. So, let us see that. In the example where we saw in the demonstration that there was a ring which jumped out that means, there was some EMF which was generated to generate the current that made the ring jump. So, one can say suppose I have an area through which B is changing and I put a wire around it, then there is an EMF generated which is equal to d B d t times the area of that shaded purple thing. So, I will just put that area in purple. This I could also write as electric field. on that wire times the length of the wire, which is E times 2 pi r. So, E comes out to be 1 over 2 pi r d b d t times area. Does it mean that electric field is only in that wire or does it exist everywhere? If I put the wire in the inner loop, then also the current flows. So, that means electric field generate there also. So, what we are going to now turn these equations into is write them in terms of fields, write law in terms of fields. Then it becomes independent of whether I am putting a wire there or not. If there is a change in magnetic field, it produces a field, electric field, right. Something exists with the change of this, this uh, magnetic field, something is given rise to and we can see that that is the electric field because that, that drives the current and we want to develop the machinery for it. So, let us now write this E m f, which is integration minus d b by d t of r t dot d s, where d s is the area. right? If I now take this region through which b is changing and take a loop around it through which I have taken this area d s, right? then I have integration 
d b by d t dot d s which is e m f with a minus sign in front and e m f through this loop is going to be nothing but electric field E produced here dot d L, which then I can write as integration by Stokes theorem curl of E dot d S. So, through Faraday's law I get this relationship that minus integration d B by d T dot d s is equal to integration curl of e dot d s for any loop, because I can take this wire of any size and in this there will be a current flowing. Therefore, I can easily conclude because d s is arbitrary that loop size is arbitrary that curl of e is equal to minus d b by d t. What does it mean? It means that at a point R, if dB by dt is not equal to 0, that means the magnetic field is changing, it produces an electric field such that curl of that electric field is equal to minus d v by d t. So, now we have another source of producing electric field. So, we have two sources one which gives me divergence of this electric field equals rho r over epsilon 0 and another one which gives me curl of electric field is equal to minus d b by d t. This we have solved quite a bit. In this case, if there was no change in the magnetic field, only electrostatics was there. In that case, what we had that divergence of E was rho r over epsilon 0 and curl of E was 0 and this gave rise to a potential V r and we developed the entire machine to deal with it. Let us look at this case the dynamic case where suppose the charge is 0 suppose I take rho r to be 0 then divergence of E is 0, but curl of E is equal to minus d B by d t. So, in this case the source of electric field that is produced is the changing magnetic field and the curl of E is 0. Notice the similarity, notice the similarity of these equations with the equations for B which give me divergence of B 0 and curl of B is equal to mu naught j. The source of B was j the current density here the source of E becomes d b by d t and divergence of both is 0. The similarity then tells you that the solution for electric field produced by changing magnetic field should be equal to minus 1 over 4 pi integration d b by d t at r prime cross r minus r prime over r minus r prime cubed integrated over d v prime, because similar equations with similar boundary conditions should have the same answer. Notice that because this field produced by d b by d t has curl non-zero that means integration of E dot d L by Stokes's theorem is not 0, but that we already know because E dot d L is nothing but the E m f. So, this field is not conservative E 
produced by changing magnetic field is not conservative. That means, if I take a path circular path around a changing magnetic field, more I go around more energy I gain that is the meaning of conservation. Otherwise, if it was conservative every time I went around the network done will be 0, but here more I go around more more is the energy that I gain. So, this is Faraday's law of fields. What it tells you is that changing P gives E and the equation is curl of E is equal to minus d b by d t. This minus sign again comes because of the Lenz's law, it gives the proper directions when I solve the equation. Let us now solve an example using this. The example I take is that of a toroid that is it is a thin tube which is running around on which we have wrapped a current carrying wire. If you like this is a long thin solenoid which has been turned into a round ring. So, that the field inside this is non zero depending on the direction of the current outside field is 0. So, what I have is this ring in which there is field inside shown by blue. Let us take the radius of this to be much, much, much greater than the thickness of here or the cross section right? is much greater than square root of cross section. So, that it is like kind of thin tube making a ring. If I change the current, if I change the current in this, the question being asked is if I in the toroid is increasing at a constant rate a will it generate an electric field and b if yes find its value on the axis of the toroid. So, let us look at this what is happening now? What is happening is that I have this thin toroid and as the current is increased this field inside it is increasing. If the field changes that means, it produces a an electric field and that is governed by curl of E is equal to minus d b by d t. I will keep writing on the right hand side the similarity with the magnetic field curl of B is equal to mu 0 j divergence of E because there is no charge is equal to 0. I have divergence of B is equal to 0. So, if I were to make a similar thing for field a magnetic field it will be similar to a current carrying ring and I am trying to find the B field on the axis of this ring. What is the current in this case? Current is J dot d a, where d a is the cross section of the ring. Here therefore, similar to i what I would have is 
flux by d t with a minus sign. Minus d by d t flux will play the role of I. How do I calculate the magnetic field here? I calculate the magnetic field by d L cross r minus r prime over r minus r prime cubed integration mu 0 i over 4 pi. So, I will calculate the electric field here on the axis or anywhere E r t is going to be there is no mu 0 1 over 4 pi i is replaced by d phi by d t with a minus sign integration d l cross r minus r prime over r minus r prime cubed and this integral can be easily calculated as we have done in an assignment in the past. So, to answer the question that I raised in the previous slide is yes there is an induced electric field and can be calculated using the formula above. So, I finish this lecture by saying that we have now looked at Faraday's law in a slightly different way in terms of fields and said that any interpreted in a way that any changing magnetic field gives rise to an electric field which drives the current. And this is precisely what you saw in the demonstration where there was no area changing, but only magnetic field was changing, but it was lighting an LED, it was making the rings jump.